Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And the topic today is going to be how you configure Vim to apply per project settings, uh, as opposed to using per language settings that apply across the board. Um, and as is customary for me, I'm gonna start by telling you what I don't use. So here is one example of a thing you could use to do this, and that is the so-called editor config standard, um, where basically you can define in a special config file what settings you wish to apply in the directory containing that file. Uh, and you can get Vim plugins and Emacs plugins and probably other editor plugins that know how to read editor config files and apply the settings automatically when you move to a directory containing one of these things. Now I don't use this because when I'm working in other people's projects, they might not want to put an editor config file in their project. It's really up to me to configure my editor to suit their project. So there might be other ways to do this um, using plugins, but if there are, I don't know what they are, and I, to be honest, haven't even really searched. Um, and the reason why I haven't searched is because I was able to make this happen with just a little bit of Vim script. And so if I can avoid introducing a third party dependency, that's usually gonna be my, my default. So I'm gonna start by showing you a bit of an example. Uh, I'm in my dot files at the moment, and I don't have any specific settings here. Um, so uh, if I open, for example, a JavaScript file, I happen to know that I've got one in here. We can see what settings I have set up for JavaScript. I'm, I'm using spaces to indent, for example, um, and I've got two spaces per tab. Uh, now I'm gonna to switch to another project. Um, so here's a project from where I work. Uh, let's open a file there, like this one. So you'll see here, another JavaScript file, but it looks different. Uh, so we have four spaces per tab, and we actually have real tabs in here, as you can see. Uh, so how do I get this to happen automatically without having to put a config file in the directory of some other repo that I don't necessarily want to pollute with configuration. I'm gonna switch back to my dot files and show you the, the so-called magic. <clears throat> uh, so it's all done, as you probably guessed by now, with auto commands. So uh, I've got some auto commands configured. Um, and at the top of my auto commands file here, I've got this global variable called uh, override, Winston override file types. And as you can see, it's just a list of file types. And these are basically the file types which I might want to apply config to uh, that is specific to a project. So uh, because where I work, we use Java and JavaScript. That's what most of these file types relate to. So there's obviously JavaScript in there and a bunch of other stuff that's relevant to front end development and Java stuff. So let's see how this variable is used. Um, so basically I take that array of file types and on this line, I join it uh, into a, a comma separated string. And then I use it to define an auto command. So you can see here, uh, because I don't know what the value of the override string will be until I've executed the join, uh, I have to use the so-called execute command. Because otherwise I would have just, I could have written this out manually as you know file type, uh, and then I could have written like a few different file types, um, and then uh, the rest of the auto command. Uh, but because I want it to be somewhat dynamic, and I want to encode this information in exactly one place, which is the override file types, oh, I do it this way. So effectively, whenever the file type is detected, then we're going to then we're going to call this apply uh, overrides function here, um, which is defined in another file. So that would be under auto this one here. Let's find apply overrides. So basically, we get that same uh, global value variable again, and uh, we we match the type against the the pattern which is defined by this type. So this time, instead of comma separating it, I am going, uh, the way we join it is with backslash. So basically we want to see if the pattern matches any of these patterns. And if it does, then we're potentially going to apply some specific settings. So uh, you'll see I've got another, fu another function call here, which basically detects whether or not I'm in a, a life ray project. Life ray is the place I work. Uh, and so if we are in a life ray project, then we set all these settings. So we turn off tab expansion, which basically means tabs remain tabs and don't get turned to spaces. We change the tab width to four instead of two. Um, we turn off rounding when we're shifting left and right. Uh, I've got some custom stuff in here because I use PAR as a formatting program for rewrapping text. So you know, one, one example of that in use would be when I highlight that and go GQ, that's actually getting piped through PAR uh, to rewrap the text. Um, the reason I use PAR is because it does a nicer job. It usually makes visually more pleasing wrapping. 
but par messes with tabs or it doesn't cope all that well with tabs so basically I've got this fanciness in here to make it work better uh, and if you're really interested in that let me know and I can do a screencast on that specifically um, but you'll notice uh, further down that the detection function gives me two levels of detection so uh, I'll go into a minute what those uh, two levels are or why I have two levels but if the first level applies I, I apply the settings that you've already seen but if we get to the second level I apply even more custom settings which in this case means uh, if I'm in JavaScript or CSS or SCSS then I'm going to undo some of the overrides that I had above. So in other words uh, these two settings here what they do is they tell them that it's okay or that it actually should make sure that every file ends with a new line which is the opposite of uh, what we had somewhere else. At least I thought it was, wasn't it? Oh no, sorry, I've got this back to front. I should read the comments before I try to explain things. This says, if you're in level 2, which is one very special repo that I'll talk about in a minute, we are going to prevent Vim from adding new lines at the end of every file, unless it's a JavaScript or SCSS file. Um, and the reason is, JavaScript and SCSS files get formatted by a tool called Prettier, which is going to put the line ending on there anyway, and you don't want your editor to be fighting your code formatting tool. But for all the other file types like Java and so on, they don't go through Prettier, so we actually do want them to adhere to the convention in this particular project, which is to not include a new line on the end of a file. Um, so that is just an example of a somewhat different environment and the kind of settings you might want to apply. But of course, you can imagine in your project, any setting that you might using Vim is up for grabs here. So I happen to have done stuff that's mostly around white space, but you could certainly do other things as well. Um, so let's look at this detection function. So that's in the so-called, uh, where is it? There it is. So detect. Basically what this uh, function does, uh, it grabs the so-called git directory by walking up the file tree, uh, which is in another file. I won't bother showing you that, but you can look at my dot files if you want to see how it works. Um, and it does a little bit of uh, caching here so that it only looks at any given directory once but what it's really doing is just calling git um, and looking at the remotes and if the remote matches this name here which is one of the so-called special projects then we are going to return two otherwise if it just matches life ray we're going to return one uh, um, yeah one um, and then we return the value um, and so because of the level of caching here if we've already done this check we just return the previously computed result. So you can imagine uh, in your own project, this is just one way that you could configure Vim to identify that that is the project you're working in. But you could also do things like look on the file system for specific configuration files, or you could read files. You, know, you could look in a package JSON or a YAML file or whatever it is that defines your pro uh, stuff in your project and look in there to see what project you're in. You could also hard code paths, but I didn't want to do that uh, because in my particular case, I have this repo or variants of this repo checked out in, in different places because we have different versions of it. Uh, so that is the, the rundown on one way to apply project specific config in Vim. I like it because it's only a few lines of Vim script and it didn't require me to mutate any of the projects uh, and it's working pretty well for me so far. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like this stuff, subscribe and I'll be back again soon with some more content for you. Thanks.